Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, I'll be as brief as I can. When it comes to this situation, Russia and Ukraine, I don't tend to get too deep in because I don't really know enough. But anyway, I went on a Firefox and for whatever I was doing. And this little article popped up from the Atlantic on there. And it the, the um, headline tweaked me interest saying, Why the West diplomacy with Russia keeps failing. American and European leaders' profound lack of imagination has brought the world to the brink of war behind Appleby. Now, that, that tweaked me because that's an interesting headline because i don't know enough about the situation but anyway it's before the article it said about the author Anne appleby is a staff writer at the atlantic a fellow at the snf agora institute at john hopkins university and the author of twilight of democracy the seductive law of authoritarianism and that tweaked me interest even more and anyway she goes on saying oh how i envy Liz trust her opportunity or how I regret her utter failure to make use of it. For those who have never heard of her, Truss is that lightweight British Foreign Secretary who went to Moscow this week to tell her Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov that his country should not invade Ukraine. Lightweight British Foreign Secretary. Ouch, that's going to hurt, isn't it? This trip was not a success. At a glacial press conference, he likened their conversation to... The mute speaking to the deaf. Later, he leaked the fact that she had confused some Russian regions with Ukrainian regions to add a little insult to the general injury. Lavrov has done this many times before. He was vile to the European Union's foreign policy chief, Jessup Borrow, last year. Now, I've heard that little quote as well. I think it's on uh, the podcast. Uh, oh, God, what now? I think somebody said the same thing about him as well saying he has been unpleasant to international conferences and rude to journalists. His behaviour is not accident. Lavrov, like Russian President Vladimir Putin, uses aggression and sarcasm as tools to demonstrate his scorn for his interlocutor. Interlocutor, that's an interesting word. Never heard that one before. To frame negotiations as useless even before they begin. To create dread and apathy. The point is to put other diplomats on the defensive or else to cause them to give cause them to give up in disgust. But the fact that Lavrov is disrespectful and disagreeable is old news. So is the fact that Putin lectures foreign leaders for hours and hours on his personal and political grievances. He did that the first time he met President Barack Obama more than a decade ago. He did exactly the same thing last week to French President Emmanuel Macron. Just should have known all of this. Instead of offering empty language about rules and values, she could have started the press conference like this. Now I could go through this like my balls have dropped, like uh, Dizzy Lizzie's has apparently over the last few months. Nothing to do with uh, could be a leadership challenge. Uh, no, won't do my voice any good. <laughs> but anyway... Could have started like this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the press. I am delighted to join you after meeting my Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov. This time we have not bothered to discuss treaties. He won't respect and promise he won't keep. We have told him instead that an invasion of Ukraine will carry very, very high costs, higher than he has ever imagined. We are now planning to cut off Russian gas exports completely. Europe will find its energy supplies somewhere else. We are now preparing to assist the Ukraine resistance for a decade if need be. We are quadrupling our support for the Russian op opposition and for Russian media too. We want to make sure that Russians will start hearing the truth about this invasion and as, loud and as loudly as possible. And if you want to do regime change in Ukraine, We'll get to work on regi regime change in Russia. Tough talking. You could have done it like Barry White. <laughs> Truss or Borrell before her could have added just a touch of personal insult in the style of Lavrov himself and wondered out loud just how is it that Lavrov's official salary pays for the lavish properties that his family makes use of in London. 
he could have listed the names of the many other Russian public servants who send their children to schools in Paris or Lugano. She could have announced that these children are now, all of them, on their way home along with their parents. No more American school in Switzerland. No more Paderis in Knightsbridge. No more Mediterranean yachts. Of course, trust, like Borough, like Macron, like the German Chancellor, who is heading to Moscow this week, would never say anything like this, not even in private. Tragically, the Western leaders and diplomats who are right now trying to stave off a Russian invasion in, of Ukraine still think they live in a world where rules matter, where diplomatic protocol is useful, where polite speech is valued. All of them think that when they go to Russia, they are talking to people whose minds can be changed by argument or debate. They think the Russian elite cares about things like its reputation. It does not. In fact, when talking to the new breed of autocrats, whether in Russia, China, Venezuela or Iran, we are now dealing with something very different. People who aren't interested in treaties and documents. People who only respect hard power. Russia is in violation of the Budapest Memorandum signed in 1994 guaranteeing Ukrainian security. Did you ever hear Putin talk about that? Of course not. He isn't concerned about his untrustworthy reputation either. Lying keeps opponents on their toes. Nor does Lavrov mind if he is hated because hatred gives him an aura of power. Their intentions are different from ours too. Putin's goal is not a flourishing, peaceful, prosperous Russia, but a Russia where he remains in charge. Lavrov's goal is to maintain his position in the murky world of the Russian elite, and of course, to keep his money. What we mean by interests, and what they mean by interests, are not the same. When they listen to our diplomats, they don't hear anything that really threatens their position, their power, their personal fortunes. Despite all of our talk, no one has ever seriously tried to end, rather than seriously limit, Russian money laundering in the West, or Russian political or financial influence in the West. No one has ever taken the idea that Germans should now make themselves independent of Russian gas, or that France should ban political parties that accept Russian money, or that the UK and the US should stop Russian oligarchs from buying property in London or Miami. No one has suggested that the proper response to Putin's information war on our political system would be an information war on his. Now we are on the brink of what could be a catastrophic conflict. American, British and European embassies in Ukraine are evacuating. Citizens have been warned to leave. But this terrible moment represents not just a failure of diplomacy, it also reflects a failure of the Western imagination, a generation long refusal on the part of diplomats, politicians, journalists and intellectuals to understand what kind of state Russia was becoming and to prepare accordingly. We have refused to see the representatives of this state for what they are. We have refused to speak to them in the way that might have mattered. Now it might be too late. And what do you reckon? Do you think she has a point? Because like, I've heard this so many times, like with London, this is where they go to wash it, wash their dirty money. And as I, when I first saw the headline, I think I was, I thought, I'm not sure if I'm going to agree with that. But the more you read into it, I'm thinking, and stuff she she'd said, especially that Sir Guy Lavrov, it was, as I said somebody muttered the same thing he's not a very nice person so that added weight to my opinion on it but what do you guys think right i shall leave the video here and till the next time i shall bid you farewell and take care